performance measurement. So in this episode, we're going to look at how businesses will be able to assess their operations, their performance. So normally when we talk about performance, we are looking at the activities that the business went through for a period of 12 months and see whether they were able to exceed their expectation, make appropriate returns or make enough returns in order to cover for their expenditure and whether their activities are sustainable. So in order for a business to be able to meaningfully assess their operations, it is very crucial for us to understand the objectives or the yardstick that they have set because without a target it will virtually be useless to assess what you are doing so we'll first talk about their mission statement so a mission statement is basically the overall goals and objectives of an entity and these are not time bound or they cannot be quantified so an educational institution let's say like dw consult exists to provide practical accounting and business related topics for users and people who listen and watch to have a better grasp in accounting and its related courses so a manufacturing entity will exist to produce quality products for their users to consume and have an improvement not for their life to take a negative turn so that is what they have set out to do so in furtherance of the mission statement it can include the following information the purpose and the aim for the existence of the organization it can also include the various values and beliefs that the organization holds dear it also includes the stakeholders where stakeholders means the people that are affected by the activities of the business and this vary per industry and per the mission of the organization so you might have two businesses in the same industry but by virtue of their mission statement they will have different stakeholders for example you have two fashion manufacturing businesses one is tailored towards the youth the other is tailored towards the elderly or one is tailored towards low income earners the other is tailored towards high income earners so by virtue of that definition those who earn up to a certain amount will be stakeholders to the business that exists to serve those who earn low and that will differ from the stakeholders for a business that will be producing bespoke attars which is going to cost a little higher mission statement can also include how the organization is going to go about the activities in satisfying the various stakeholders that we have earlier enumerated let's look at the various objectives of an entity and how it is going to augment its measurements the objectives of a business may be developed at different levels objectives may be developed at the strategic the tactical and operational levels now this is to allow an organization to measure its progress towards a set target so under normal circumstances suitable performance measures will need to be developed and set in order to measure the achievement as it progresses now these measures would differ according to the type of objectives in play so when we come to strategic objectives one this falls under the remit of senior managers they are supposed to set this kind of objectives so you have the ceo and those at the board level they will sit and bring out what the business is strategically to achieve it also covers the aim of the entire organization what the business is supposed to achieve within a particular point in time it doesn't focus on an individual unit or a department so for example 
if the business wants to increase its market share in a five-year period so this is the various operations the various divisions in the business coming together that will push the market share of the business to go up it is also long term in nature so when we talk about long term we are looking at what can be achieved over a five year period the next one is tactical so these are normally set by middle level managers so we are talking about the line managers the directors the general managers maybe you have the human resource director the finance director and the likes tactical objectives normally bring strategic objectives a step lower the strategic objectives normally is broad it doesn't make sense for the ordinary person so it will be broken down into a tactical level where it will come a step lower in terms of being understood it also spans a medium term period so above one year so what a business is supposed to achieve let's say in seven years time it will be broken down into a medium term let's say five years then when you come to operational objectives that will now bring it to the groundwork the day-to-day -day activity that will help in achieving the tactical objectives and consequently the strategic objectives so this has to do with what the business is supposed to achieve on a daily basis which will translate to what they will achieve in the short term and then what they will achieve in the medium that will translate into the long term so normally these are unit specific or department specific how a particular unit can cut down their cost how the production unit can produce more than did in the previous period or better than their competitor now you realize that we have discussed operational which is short term tactical which is medium and then the strategic which is long now there can be a problem here if care is not taken so because managers who will be relied upon in achieving the day-to-day -day objectives which is operational which will also translate to the achievement of the tactical objective and then feed into the strategic objective if care is not taken managers will be biased pro the achievement of the short-term objectives to the detriment of the long-term ones so for example the production department can cut down on the resources that have to be employed in the producing of a product in order to drop its prices down in order to make more sales now it will increase the number of sales that will be achieved in a particular period which will inform the amount of bonus or a reward package that will go to the sales and the production department but if the reduction in the resources or the kind of resources that is being used will lead to a shoddy product being churned out when customers realize the low quality of the product that is coming out in a period of two years or in a tactical period it will lead to most customers withdrawing so managers will achieve their aim by meeting their targets getting the related reward package but then it will cost the business of the quality of product that they are known for so normally companies will need to make a trade-off between achieving their short term without it having a negative impact on their long-term objectives trying to reduce the cost a business in case should not affect the level of quality that is required for the business to thrive in the long term now managers must also be critically monitored in order not to manipulate results to achieve a reward package let's look at areas that will impact the measurement of a business's performance now there are factors one can be the market the government can also have an impact and then the economy so let's look at the market conditions that are likely to have an impact on the measurement of a business's performance so if a business operates in a highly competitive environment the fortunes of one business 
can affect the other. So a strategy that a business brings up that becomes successful will be a threat or will challenge the fortunes or the success of another. So when a new competitor enters the free, it is likely to affect how this business will fare. The next one is economic conditions. So demand and supply interaction in an economy or in the market, it will influence the business's performance or its product. So if customers are in the position to demand more, then the business is likely to perform better. Granted, they are able to supply more to meet the demand. For government policies, items such as introduction of taxes on sales and profits will mean that the outcome of a business's activity will not be that favorable. Now, if a government is prepared to make some investment into the economy, it helps for businesses to thrive. So the government is ready to offer some grant, make the environment or the economy enabling for businesses to thrive. It augurs the business to succeed. If the government grants tax incentives, it helps the business to push its frontiers to make more progress. Now, business legislation such as Companies Act, employment laws, consumer protection rights are likely to help the business to succeed or vice versa, depending on how friendly these legislations are.